I'm late to the party, so I'm just gonna start with something that most people already know. Hollow Knight is amazing. Maybe even a masterpiece. Fluid gameplay, fair difficulty, beautiful animations, well choreographed boss fights, an awesome aesthetic, although I might be biased, and a rich story that you have to crack the code for yourself. In a lot of ways, it has most everything I would look for in a game. Most people can probably look and understand why Hollow Knight is good in these terms fairly easily. For me though, justified or not, it feels a lot more personal. I think Hollow Knight isn't just an outstanding game, but is actually a paragon of sorts. Something very emblematic of the change, adaptation, and growth of the indie game scene following the 2000s. In a way, it sort of, intentionally or not, comments, amplifies, and reflects on a lot of the heavy-hitting marks of the scene through those years. I hope by the end I've convinced you I'm not just pulling this out of my butt, either. I have no issue whatsoever with just admitting that I enjoy something. I enjoy a lot of things without needing any grand or over-the-top reason. I did that just in my last video. But with Hollow Knight, something really is really special. And explain why I want to briefly run through my history with indie games, and how this informs the way I perceive Hollow Knight. The game that I think really set off this sort of indie game scene that we see today is Cave Story a game that I previously made a super long video on and have a super deep love for. It formed a lot of things that I think were carried literally and in spirit into other games following it that I think we even still see today in Hollow Knight. Cave Story drew inspiration from classic Metroid and Castlevania type gameplay. It was a 2D platform shooter occupying a greater world that you slowly unlock while getting more upgrades, gameplay quirks, and weapons. The game also covered a story that, while mainly direct, also left a lot of plot details, character history, and general world lore to be discovered by the individual player, if they so took the effort to inquire. Cave Story was also hard, but not hard in a cheap sense. It had scaling difficulty, and even different endings depending on your ability. There were three main endings, one unsatisfying but easy one, one standard and satisfying greater one, and one large-scale, epic one that involved you freeing the inhabitants of the island from the great evil power that oppressed them. There were plenty of likable quirky characters and lush area differences. These are some of the things I also feel a connection to Hollow Knight in. While Hollow Knight doesn't really offer projectile weapons, it's more than just some gameplay that I see some similarity in. I think as we followed the independent gaming boom of the 2000s, there is a really good point of reference to see what I would call the first wave following Cave Story. Now, I'm not some sort of official scholar or anything. This is an extremely simplified and narrow scope at the way this scene grew, but I grew up seeing these changing before my eyes. This is the way I felt, what I experienced, what I saw. Like I was living in it and the first time I really took note of the independent games industry as an industry was its own blooming beast that was Indie Game the Movie. It basically was a documentary following the development and release of three games, Fez, Braid, and Super Meat Boy. The third especially I had huge flashbacks to in a later point of Hollow Knight, the different slick platforming, jumping, and dashing maneuvers gained throughout the game become like heaven on earth to play with, as you go around these giant buzzsaw blades that are seen almost nowhere else in the game. The way the platforming looked and felt reminded me so much of when I was younger and played the difficult, quick, precise platforming levels of Super Meat Boy. It literally felt like I was transported back. I was like, Wait a sec, I recognized this gameplay loop as I was quickly pushing buttons and changing my direction. Despite not playing Super Meat Boy in years, I feel like I felt the spirit of it alive and better than ever in this project. Now many other games following this general wave that went viral focused very heavily on a different aspect of the game. The focus on an ever-growing, debatable, and deep lore an opportunity for theories and deep diving to figure out the full story. This is probably the major way indie games have gone viral and drawn continual interest in the time since on the internet. Having the deep enriching world that takes true searching to fully understand over the last few years seems to be the best way to invigorate fan bases of the indie game scene. 
For me, it feels like Hollow Knight takes the likable aesthetic and traits of all indie games, perfecting and making them its own. Hollow Knight feels to me like it holds the King's brand of indie game culture. It represents and holds onto the memorable pinpoints in the greater legacy of indie games. It also doesn't exactly hurt that all on its own, it's amazingly clean and well made. It just seems like every success and every influential cornerstone to me when I look back at the post-2000s indie culture scene is warmly woven into the style and presentation of Hollow Knight. So even though when I played it, I was experiencing it completely blindly, not even seeing a trailer until I had beaten the best ending of the game, it felt like an old friend was welcoming me back from the first few minutes of play. And that sort of thing always gets me. I've always been a very nostalgic and sentimental person, but every time some new life-changing event happens, it reminds me how much life really is flying by. My sister literally gets married tomorrow, the day after this video is posted. I look around and just wonder how the heck she got there, how I got here. Through all the bumps and hills, this sort of thing may be silly, but it means a lot to me. To see the things I love as a kid, and as a preteen, a teen, a later adolescent, to see them grow and change and develop, get stronger and reincarnate themselves as ideas into the current things that I love, that is something special that I think I feel when I play Hollow Knight. It's the legacy that it's holding on to, what it represents. Even if you don't feel that way personally about Hollow Knight, I hope from time to time you can feel that sort of energy too. So, a big thank you to Wizbang2093, Akio, Frillnecked Lizard, Thomas Greenway, CJ, Lachlan So Stupid, For the Whales, and all of my other patrons who give me money to eat each month. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, and I hope you have a great week. I know I will. I have Persona 4 after all.